brain. So as an artist functioning on a business brain, well, then you, you're, you're going to be, once again, you're going to be setting your goals. And if you follow those goals and you make your timeline, I, I say it's in a way like planning a wedding, you know, because that relates to women. It's like planning a wedding. You go, okay, how many years out is, you, you know, if you're going to plan a wedding and it's going to be in a year's time, when do the invites have got to go out? When have got the, when yeah. the, when's the dress got to be? Oh, you th like to that extent you went, okay, I've got to win this prize at this time. And, yeah, pretty much. You know, you, I, you I, had I, a kind much, of I thought by 2010, I need to win, a, uh, um, you know, an Australian, re Australia recognized art prize. Before that, I need to achieve a whole lot of other um, goals, a whole lot of other prizes. And I probably need to do a postgrad degree in fine art to be recognized and considered equal to my male counterparts who don't have a degree because that's what right. us women have to do we have got to sometimes yeah, be excel that little bit more yeah and and just to be taken seriously i thought well i'm not going to i'm not getting taken seriously by 2004 uh 2005 i was exhibiting i had solo exhibitions i I'd, I'd founded a, a national association of portrait artists in 2002 um so i was helping other wow. artists on that platform of portrait yeah um, I'd been, you know, I'd been, even my, my solo exhibition in 2004, I had Dr. Carl open it for me. I was, I was connected and yet I yeah. wasn't being hung in those art prizes that I wanted to be hung in. Right. So, and the art you was entering for them. Well, I think it was a, I, I felt it was a bit of a club and I think I was probably yeah. right in thinking that. <laughs> so um, you probably were and, a bit of a boys club, as you've said from yeah. Julian Ashton. So you know, it, it, it is in almost every industry, I think. So tell, talk to me about the Archibald, sorry. Yeah, so the club, uh, so I thought, okay, if I, if I go and start doing a postgrad, because my, you know, I, I applied to National Art School uh, to do a master's degree. They wanted me to do an undergrad first. And I said, look, I, I think I've done enough art history and enough coursework, and they wanted me to do a coursework. Bernard Ollis was very much on my side. He said, look, I think she can quite capably handle herself doing a postgrad with just court without coursework with a thesis. Yeah. They liked my uh, proposal for thesis very much, which was um, it was called um, portraiture and the identity or identity and, and the portrait, which was about how oh, nice. identity and portraiture are linked, but not necessarily the same thing. Um, so right. how we present ourselves in a portrait is actually not necessarily how the artist sees the person, but it, uh, it has to be a collaboration. And often it ends up, particularly in a commission situation, it ends up that the subject ends up um, dictating how they want to be how presented to the world. Yeah, so well, of course. Of it's course, a, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and, and for the artist who, who has been commissioned, they want the owner to buy it, I guess. So, yeah. so um, well, a commission you know, they're starts going to do what they're asking. Yeah, a commission starts with the, um, the, the subject saying to the artist of choice, I want you to do my portrait here's the deposit type thing, or here's your yeah. here's a deposit for your fee. Whereas my choice, my my paintings, my um, award-winning paintings, I should say, you know, because I won as a finest in the Porsche Geach, I've, I was um, I, I won a certificate of merit in, over in the in the US at the in New York wow. at the Met for um, a painting of Salvatore Zafreya, who's an artist here. These are okay. these portraits of uh, of people I chose to paint, not commissions. Because right, they, and the and the Archibald Prize winner that you did was that Maria Venuti? Was that you? No, yeah, I, I did, did pay paint for no. Maria Venuti. That was hung in the Salon de Refuses in uh, two thousand five. So it was it was yeah, I was okay. getting very close in the Salon. But, um, <laughs> it was a portrait of Glenn A. Baker. Um, it was a big oh one. okay yeah, Glenn A. Baker, fantastic. Okay, so. Um, so talk to me a little bit about how the how how far you went with your art career and then what was the next one? Well, what was it, the, it, after at the end of the ten years. Well, once again, it goes to your adaptability and it goes down to what you're um, uh, basing your credentials. So, unbeknown to me, I would see these biennales and you know I'd hear about these biennales. What's a biennale? It's a collection of artists showing their their work at a particular venue. Okay, and yeah. I. I suddenly, as soon as I started my master's degree in the end of beginning of 2005, I suddenly was on, I appeared on the radar for international biennales, which I didn't know that was ah, even a thing, right? right? So I'm just letting people know that if you really want to get out there and be on an international platform, funnily enough, once you start building up your, it's like anything, you build up your credibility, you build up, build up your profile, 
Yeah. But also by doing courses or by, um, in, uh, you know, hanging another set of letters, whatever it might be, on your name. doesn't matter what age you want to do it at. Um, because I've known friends to want to do a master's degree in, you know, in their 60s. They'll still do it. And then suddenly Why they not? start getting yeah. um, asked about doing things or you, know, you might do a PhD at the age of 65. Right. So what you're saying is if you work your way up and you build a reputation and then suddenly you're on the radar and you're getting invited yeah. as opposed to having to go out and find them. And, and to right. be asked to do things. And it's, it's interesting because as soon as I signed up to do my master's degree and I was in it, I was invited to attend the Florence Biennale in the end of 2005. And at that time wow. I took over... Um, a bunch of little five-sided portraits, which were was part of my master's proposal. So um, I wanted to be over there in, in the area of painting, but the way I presented my work, the judges over there deemed it an installation. So I ended up winning a bronze medal for installation rather than what I was pitching right. for, which was painting. <laughs> which was painting. Which was painting. But you did win a gold medal for painting in the end, didn't well, you? Well, I did. Two years later, I was invited to go back. Since <laughs> You just don't give up. Well, it was just also that I... I you know, they, they invited me back because all the medal winners were automatically invited back to the next Biennale. Right. And by then, I guess, you understood what the, what they were actually yes. looking for. Yes, and so, so I thought, right, they want Stay paintings. away from installations. Yeah, well, they, I wanted, when, when they said they wanted paintings, I thought, right, I'll give them a painting. So I did a, a six-metre mural. Um, they got a big wow. painting. Six metres? Well, it was Australian wildflowers. I wanted it to be celebrating Australia because the first entry, of course, was Australian faces because I did all these family and friends, 60 little portraits, and I was celebrating our diversity. So it was really about saying, look at us. We are yeah. so diverse in our in our nationality, in our ethnicity, um, in our culture. And then that didn't, I mean, it got recognised and it people yeah. got the message that that came through very strongly in my installation. Um, and then when I went back there, I wanted to really, in the meantime, I really wanted to celebrate our beautiful um, wild wilderness, which in as a, as I'm a diver, I wanted to take oh, on right. the colours of the Great Barrier Reef. So the six metre mural was celebrating um, our beautiful wildflowers and um, the colours of our cobalt waters. And oh, yeah, so that, that was incredible. And that won the gold medal for from the Florence Biennale. And so, uh, and so, was the Florence Biennale the culmination of your career, or did you keep going? The Archibald Prize came after that. I'm interested as to at what stage you decided, okay, that career is done, on to the next one. Yeah, well, it's, um, I suppose the, the Florence Biennale was uh, this other thing in my head that I'd been watching so many, and it's is very, very, y y we're all aware, so much talent in Australia is exported, yes. and only when we bring yeah. it back here, then we recognise it. And how true is that about so many of our actors so many yes. of our musicians, I hadn't really thought of that. so many of yeah. our singers. You know, you look at people like Tina Arena, she's got the most amazing voice and she only started really getting recognised when she went over to Italy and spent a lot of time overseas. She's a phenomenon overseas and yet we still, I don't think, really pay her the respect that she is due. No, you're quite, she's still tiny Tina Arena to us from yeah. the young talent yeah. time or whatever, whereas in in France, I think she's like a national treasure. Exactly. So once again, it's mm. it's that whole, you know, dichotomy that happens. It's not fair that people have, we've got no. a tall poppy syndrome in Australia that sometimes is a good driver. There's a, there's, it's a, there's a silver lining that it drives people here to go, okay, fine, well, I'm going to go overseas and then maybe overseas will recognise me and then suddenly you come back and you're more recognised here. Um, yeah, that was right. basically what drove me. I went, well, I can't get hung over here. I'm going to go overseas and be, you know, um, recognised in, in – and it, the gold medal in, in Italy, in the Florence Biennale, that really opened a lot of um, eyes yeah, over there because it was from, you know, 600 – uh, was from 800 artists from 60 countries or something. It was like a, a phenomenal thing to be considered. And You're absolutely incredible, Nafisa. You really are. But it's it, it not recognised here. I came <laughs> back and I still couldn't get hung in a gallery. I applied on in the beginning of 2008. I applied to 23 no. Sydney galleries and I got rejected by 23 Sydney galleries. So it's wow. It still didn't after winning that prize. Yeah, it still didn't. It still didn't, you know, win any, uh, you know, it still was struggling. Cut through the elitism. It wouldn't cut through that elitism in the, um, in, in, in the art community, obviously. Not so, enough, no, but I had done my, then, you know, I got my master's degree and then suddenly you're in the club for 
the Australian right. area. So <clears throat> then in 2010, in 2008, end of 2008, um, I won the Perth Portrait Prize with a portrait of um, uh, Lewis Morley, who was a very, very celebrated Australian photographer. He was now in his 80s. Okay. And, um, you know, he, he did the very famous black and white photograph of Christine Keeler, um, the nude sitting on a heart. Right, which, yes, yes, yeah, okay. That's, yep. that's Lewis Morley. And, and um, so right. when I met him, I was fascinated by his history. He'd been a prisoner of war in China, um, in, in the camps over there. Um, his, he was Incredible. half Chinese, um, half British, came over here. Fascinating story, absolutely amazing. Movie. Yeah. And um, now in his 80s, well, he passed away a couple of years ago, but at that time in his 80s, he was going to launch a new uh, career in um, assemblage, which was really amusing. 